Hi everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Renee, and uh, I have a son with uh, with disabilities. Um, he's actually diagnosed with Meckel syndrome uh, with the Joubert tendency. So both uh, rare syndromes uh, and uh, quite complicated. So <laughs> I'm not going to get into that today. Um, but this is, uh, I'm trying something a little bit different and thought I would try to do a video blog today as opposed to writing it out. Even though I've got a good chunk of it written out already, but I thought let's try something different. So I hope you enjoy and, uh, feel free to comment, email me, let me know what, uh, let me know what you think. But, have you ever thought about exactly what you do in a day? How do you start your day? Have you ever thought about how easy your life is? You're saying easy? You're talking about easy? My life is easy? Well, take a moment and think about what you did this morning. When you got up and you started your day. So you probably got yourself out of bed. You went to the washroom. You brushed your teeth. You had a shower. You got dressed, made coffee or tea, maybe you had time to read the newspaper, check your emails, um, before, uh, be before you, you know, jumped in the car and headed to work or the gym or shopping or wherever. So, does, does any of that sound familiar? I bet it does to quite a few of you. But imagine this. Imagine you're lying in bed, uh, ready to get up and, uh, but you can't. You have to wait for someone to come and help you get out of bed. Perhaps you want to call out to somebody. Uh, but um, what if you can't speak? What if you're not able to? You might have an assistive device that, that might be able to speak for you to help you call someone. Um, let's think about it. Now, let's say someone has arrived to help get you up. Maybe they need to help you get dressed. Uh, you might need help using the washroom. You might need help in the shower. What about if you couldn't eat anymore? What if you could, but it was recommended that you didn't due to the health problems and health risks that it would cause you? Imagine if you had to get your nutrition your food through a tube that was in your nose or in your stomach. Not being able to taste food anymore. Those are just a few things for you to think about. Um, I want you to stop and really think about it. What if it was you? How do you think you would feel? Now let's see. Based on what I've said so far, um, let's just say uh, that you're not able to walk, so perhaps likely you you probably need to be in a wheelchair. Um, now, let me just say there are many types of disabilities, um, and not all of them require the use of uh, an assistive device. So, but for this uh, for this purpose, let's say you do. Let's also assume that because you're not able to eat orally, that you have a G tube. Let's say it's in your stomach. That's where you get your nutrition. Uh, oh, let me let me ask you. Did you walk to your car this morning to work to the gym? Again, there are thousands of people who aren't able to. Have you ever thought about getting around in a wheelchair? Think about some of the places that you go, and think of take a visual and as to how accessible do you think they are? Are there ramps? Uh, automatic buttons for the doors that are in reach? Are the doors wide enough for your wheelchair? The hallways? Are the things that you use every day, even around your house, are they within reach for you? If you were in a wheelchair. That seems like a lot to think about so far, doesn't it? All right, now, 
on the other side of the coin, so to speak, what if you were the one helping that person every day? Circumstances are different for everyone and every situation, it's true. But suppose you had to get someone else ready for their day before you could get started with yours. Wait a minute. That is how you start your day. What if you were the parent and this child was yours? There are thousands of families that do this every day. This is their life. How would you cope or handle things? Do you think you could? Without complaining? Imagine, think of all the things that you will have had to learn. And a lot of the things that you'll continue to learn. Uh, what about all the doctors, the therapists, the nurses, the teachers, suppliers of equipment and things that your child needs? And there are multiples of these people. In other words, there are a number of doctors and specialists. There could be anywhere from one to five therapists, the multiple nurses and teachers, and probably a limited supply, a limited number of suppliers for the equipment uh, and supplies that you need. What about work? Do you have a boss, an employer, that is just absolutely wonderful and patient uh, enough to let you answer those calls from the school where you might be needed? How about all the doctor's appointments and tests or procedures that your child may have that you'll need to take time off for? What about hospital stays? Staying 24-7 at the hospital with your child? Because nobody knows your child like you do. No one there would understand your child's communication either. Who is the best advocate for your child? You are. Now, I have to tell you. I have to say. For those of you who don't know, and likely many of you do, my son falls into a lot of these categories. My son does not walk. He's in a wheelchair. He doesn't even wait there on his feet. My son doesn't talk. He says one word, mind you, mom. How awesome is that? Some of you might have seen the video. but And he uses an iPad for his communication. My son is not able to eat orally. Patrick does have a G-tube in his stomach. That is how he gets his nutrition. Everything he has goes through that tube. Medications, his nutrition, it all goes through the, the tube in his stomach. Families like mine, and there are many, there are many, many of them, Really, what's the word? I guess we count on, we really count on, and a lot, many of the organizations and programs, uh, the resources that are available um, to help with a lot of the day to day things. Uh, that we do in our everyday life. A lot of the equipment, medications, and the things like that, they're not cheap. And they're new, well, you know what, I was going to say numerous, they really aren't numerous, but I mean, there are a few organizations that, that, do, that do help. One of them is Easter Seals. Easter Seals have uh, a lot of each family uh, a certain amount per year to help uh, fund different equipment or supplies that families may that families may need for their children. But you know what? These organizations, the need. Far outweighs the amount, the enough, the amount of resources that are available, and this is why this year again I am going to do the Easter Seals Drop Zone. Now, this little 
blog post. <laughs> it was kind of twofold. One, I want to try something different. But two, I also wanted to, um, I didn't want this actually to be something where, oh, people are saying, oh, poor you and you feel sympathy or I just feel so bad, blah, 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 whatever. That is not the case at all. I really just want you to think, because I'm sure many of them thought, have not thought of that before. What if it was you? What if you were in the, in the position of any one of those families? How would you feel? You would be really absolutely grateful for the help of, from a lot of these organizations. And this is why we need your support this year again to help raise money for Easter seals. We are going to do the drop zone again. We are doing a team this year. Myself, my Patrick's dad, Gabe, and my boyfriend, Mark. Patrick means the absolute world to the three, to all of us. And we have formed Team Patrick, and we are going to do the drop zone, and we would love for your support. If you cannot support us financially, please share this with your friends and family. And ask them to take a moment and think about it as well. To put themselves in, you know, in our position. And uh, about all these things that, then this is just the beginning. There is so much more, but that we, that they would really need to think about. I'm going to post a link. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate anything that you can, that you, uh, that you're able to do. And like I said, please pass this on. We are truly grateful. And we hope you have a wonderful day and a lovely evening. Thank you so much. Bye for now.